Hello everyone, I am Infrastructurist and welcome to a completely unique take on the quite popular one tile city challenge in City Skylines. We'll be building a fully functional tropical themed city on this tiny island in the middle of nowhere. So what's our goal? Well traditionally the challenge is to fit as many sims as possible into a single tile. But if you know me, you know it all has to look beautiful and feel realistic. So our goal is to make it densely populated beautiful and functional. And to make it more interesting, we'll try to achieve this using only vanilla assets. The map we're using for our challenge is the appropriately named Schmoll Island. Now per default, this map is absolutely stunning, but it does have kind of a timbered theme, which doesn't quite fit the tropical vibes we are hoping to achieve. So to fix this, we'll apply a little magic by using the theme mixer mod to switch the original 4k prior map theme to this Seychelles theme and replacing the pine trees with some other trees, including palms. So with the snap of a finger, come on, there you go. <laughs> We've got a tropical island off the coast of Florida or maybe somewhere in the Pacific. Let me know in the comments where you think this would be placed. So I've named our newfound city Isla Soleada, which I'm pretty sure in Spanish translates to Sunny Island. Um, but anyways, let's just have a look at what we've got to work with. So obviously we are surrounded by nothing but the uh, nice blue ocean on all sides. And one thing that's really cool about this map is that um, this um, piece of infrastructure here is actually already in place when you boot it up. And as you guys might be able to see, we've got outside connections sort of hidden in these buildings here. And we've got $80,208 to work with, which is oddly specific. And I don't know why we've got that amount, but that is sure to be a challenge. I guess the first thing we need to do is establish a road layout uh, that kind of covers every edge of the island. Uh, we are not going to create like the full grid, but just something to really connect up all aspects of the island first. Uh, and then we're going to dig into providing the first necessary utilities as well as an industrial estate. Uh, but before we get to any of that, I'm actually going to change the geography of the island a bit because if this isn't triggered enough, I'd like to have some rivers cut through the island, just some some rather small ones. So we're going to go ahead and add that first, just some shallow rivers to kind of add a bit of extra flair to the to the whole place. And there you go, we've got a nice entrance to like a main boulevard to run straight through much of the downtown area, which I imagine will be somewhere around here. Now we'll create a road that is going to be the arterial road covering much of the island. And I don't want it to be too big a road. Um, preferably it's going to be a combination of this asymmetrical three lane road in combination with long stretches of this two lane road with median trees. And then we can use node controller to create like a seamless transition from the uh, two lane road to the asymmetrical three lane road. So we'll just start off with the road with the medians and then we'll upgrade whenever we have intersections where we feel it makes sense to actually upgrade. So once again, I'll choose this La La Palm because it's not too generic. Ah, oh, generic. It's not too invasive. Actually, I'm going to go for the coconut tree. What I'm saying is wrong. <laughs> and then we're just going to cover up much of the island. With a good network of arterials in place, covering all of the interesting islands with super wonky bridges that I should probably fix. 
before I sound really clever. There you go. That's much better. Um, we are on to providing some utilities uh, so that we can get some power and sewage services um, up and running. And we've got this issue where I've actually spent like 20k just on roads by now, uh, which is a real bad way of prioritizing my funds. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's create like an industrial area that is also going to house some initial industry for the um, for the city. So I'm just going to create like a very very basic uh, road layout that is um, primarily grid based, and then we're going to add in our industry. Uh, as well as a power generating station of sorts. So this is a good start. We'll just get the trees out of the way. And we need a source of power. And I think ideally I'd go for the advanced coal power plant. It's very cool looking. I guess the issue is that it's, it's also very expensive. 35k is more than half my current budget. Uh, so that is certainly going to be an issue. Um, there aren't many uh, cheaper options except for this coal power plant, which isn't very pretty. But I'm hopeful that uh, with some clever thinking, I might be able to just cover it up a bit. So I will be placing down the coal power plant here. Uh, and yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's not a beautiful asset. But as I said, hopefully I can create like a larger complex by incorporating some of the uh, industrial assets into it. We've now got our improvised power plant, which is basically the cheap coal power plant fused in with these three or actually four industrial buildings. I will be filling out some more of these blocks with some industrial assets just to create a really, really strong job base out here. And the te technique I'll use is just to have many of these warehouse buildings um, mixed together to create like uh, larger complexes. So if we take three of these, for instance, and we sort of fuse them together then what we can do is we can grab these aprons which are basically like you know pavement and we can add these we can then grab the fences and in that way we can create larger um factories basically custom made fact factories uh like this and then we can you know fill in with all kinds of props so let's say uh for this specific uh, building we'll just find some kind of prop that we think is uh makes sense they could be making anything they could be creating buses or other industrial hardware they could even like build maybe they build airplanes here uh actually um yeah they they don't but i mean the the principles are there they, they could be or maybe they create they create mobile homes actually they do create mobile homes that's that's uh yeah this is a major exporter of uh, uh different types of like mobile homes and um these used for camping as well and i'll just be adding uh just a bit of decal work to this place as well once again just to just to give it uh, a tiny bit of character without going too heavy into the into the actual detailing or anything like that but it's just to kind of customize it. And I know this isn't square, like at all. And that's one example of a custom made factory that provides what, 32, quite a bit of jobs actually. 
Uh, and I'm going to create a few more of these before we call off uh, this industrial district and focus on actually getting some people into the city. We added some very simple detailing using these uh, pathways and of course lots of trees and some decals. And in general what you'll find is that Isla Soleada is incredibly lush and full of beautiful nature. So we're going to have large swaths of just trees and parks and other stuff throughout. to kind of break up the let's say urban settlement a bit and also make it a bit easier because we can't build on everything here for like one single video. I mean, one tile is actually a huge amount of space. In particular, if you're not too happy of zoning, which obviously I'm not. This is also why we're going to add an additional major theme to the geography of the island. Because we're going to take this bay here and we're just going to drag it across and create an actual river uh, where we separate the rest of the island. So we're gonna separate this mountain here from the rest of the island. So I'll just be creating this to have like a big sort of inland area here with water and we'll drag it out here. There you go. Let's upgrade this to a road. Uh, a road? <laughs> a bridge is what I meant to say of course. Let's upgrade it to a bridge. And we'll do the same here. So this is like a long pretty unrealistic bridge which we might then have to change afterwards but let's just let the water fill in and would you look at that i'm pretty happy with how this turned out i added like uh, an inland lake as well like I guess most lakes are inland so yeah added a lake we have of course already got a massive issue one is that we've absolutely burning through our bank balance so we're gonna have issues pretty soon uh, and we've only got um, electricity covered we don't actually have any water treatment facilities or production of water so we're gonna go ahead and place down an inland water treatment uh, plant and then we probably just need to use water towers um, efficiently uh, so yeah interesting stuff I'd like for the treatment plant to actually be sort of separated from the rest of the industrial area so we're just going to draw it out here. Create like a, a, a bendy area here. Uh, something like this. I think that's fine. We can use forest to, to cover it up afterwards. Uh, let's see what we've got available. I need the cheapest option of the inland water uh, treatment plant. So this one is uh, 2.5k, which is not bad. And this one, uh, never mind. Yeah, we're going with this one, obviously. And I'll just place it here. 
and then it would be pretty cool if we could find like an industrial asset that sort of looks like it could uh, actually be part of the water treatment plant uh, we've got this one which got i mean it's not too bad i feel so if we just add these and maybe we can stitch them together an unholy project i've got going here maybe something like this for free in total yeah, i kind of like that we'll need some parking lots for the employees here at the treatment plant of course so let's just get those added and i'm playing with the traffic manager president uh mod so i do need realistic parking or a good amount of parking lots throughout the city because cars won't just be despawning they'll actually attempt to park so let's just make this place a little more interesting by using these aprons then we will once again grab our industrial fences i think this is from the ore industry we'll fence this off and then we'll have like some containers and other props uh, over here on the other side of the facility and i'll just create like an awkward shape here because then we can go in with move it and we can just curve it and i think i think that's fine fine enough remove some of the trees here and we are starting to have a water treatment plant aren't we very nice i promised you guys some props so we're gonna go ahead and see what we can find which sort of props actually make sense for water treatment plant i have absolutely no clue so we'll just uh, be adding some stuff at random i feel I think that looks all right. Let's cover it all up with trees, unless we might want to actually angle this uh, a little better, like so, and we'll cover it in the shade of this old, now abandoned factory. There you go, I like that. Then we can cover it up with trees. We've got our trusty forest brush uh, mod here, allowing me to very easily add dense, thick forest around this whole area and I think we'd want that and I feel that looks pretty cool as well obviously uh, this area I feel is is part of the same industrial district here uh, once again I'm not too sure about the name of this but I needed something that was just a bit more unique than the previous name so yeah here we are we'll of course need to actually produce some water as well we are now down to 14,000 at our bank, so and this is three and a half thousand, so we're we're really starting to run into issues here. And I need to place this somewhere else, I feel. Uh, so I'll just be placing it over here. Uh, but uh wait a minute. It is also going to need power. So I guess I'm actually not placing it here. I need to place it uh pretty close to the industrial side over here. And hopefully it can avoid pollution uh, but it certainly needs the power that is actually being produced here and of course i need to provide piping for the industrial area on none of this is going to work at all so we're gonna run our water pipes underneath roads and uh, this is how things are done in real life as well there you go that should cover our industrial quarter with electricity and the uh, water utilities now being taken care of we've got a big problem because our bank balance is just about empty and i think that for the type of expansion we want to start out with i don't have enough money so i'm gonna go ahead jump into loans and we're going to take every single loan there is and then we are going to map out the entire downtown start creating this district uh, and then we'll move on from there. We desperately need to get some actual money in the bank now, uh, get some revenue, uh, get some taxes flowing. So what I'd like to do is to create like sort of a green belt that separates this part of downtown from lower density developments alongside this lake. 
So to kind of give us a bit of a guidance, we are going to use the district zoning tool to create a few districts so that we can get like an overview of the city. So we've got downtowns mapped out here. We've got Mount Soliara and I just created Lake Erie here. To follow in this uh, pattern that we've used, I'm actually going to just use the size of downtown so that we've got the green belt here. And maybe it's just easiest to like map out the green belt as soon as we've got the road placed. So let's just grab, uh, we'll actually just we'll grab this road here because it already has the correct palm chosen. And then we are just gonna come in here and we'll curve our way down here. Gonna grab this road again and then we're gonna use network multi-tool and the create parallel tool. And then we're just gonna go ahead and create like a parallel road to this. Now it's obviously on the wrong side so we're just gonna hit tab and then hit plus a couple of times to create this green belt. And that's fine. And we'll hit enter to just create it. We've now segmented downtown into a nice little square here. And we'll just be creating the road layout of downtown um, by employing a pretty simple grid structure, actually. It's going to maximize uh, land usage pretty nicely for us. So that's our preferred um, road layout of choice and uh, to some it's a little boring looking but that's okay we're all about efficiency here in Isla Soliada and I may break the the grid up uh, just a bit at times to you know add a bit of extra flair uh, it's pretty easy to just make some small changes to the overall design that just makes everything a little nicer looking and I may not connect all road roads to the green belt roads here because uh, we want pretty good traffic flow as well for those uh, but i'm just gonna come through with some roads and just go straight through we're also going to utilize uh one-way roads uh here in the in the downtown um, because uh, it's gonna help a bit more with the traffic flow so i'm thinking that we're gonna what i'm what am i doing oh yeah it's it's okay i'm doing fine <laughs> Just going to have these three lane one way roads and we're going to have the same uh, over here, uh, but near the coastline here. And they are going to turn to two lane one way roads and I'm just going to cut straight through here, I think. Yeah. And for this, we'll make a small section here to connect. There you go. So that's a good start. We'll just segment into a few more blocks and then we'll start building away. With the downtown road layout now mapped out, we are finally ready to start placing some big juicy buildings. Now, ideally, I actually want cool skyscrapers from the skyscraper content creator pack in the city. But there's just a slight issue. We are going to have to make much more money before we can actually start placing these because they are like this one, which is awesome, is 100k a pop. And we just we simply can't afford that because we've got two uh, $43,000 uh, dollar renos in the bank and that's with all free loans currently chipping away. Uh, so we'll simply need to be placing other stuff before we uh, we get that far. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start developing alongside this main avenue that is going to be the densest part of the downtown core and then we're gonna work our way out from there and i'll be using a technique uh, that some of you uh, have seen me use before and it's basically um, merging um, high density residential buildings with low density commercial buildings to establish like mixed use buildings pretty much and to have like a base for the skyscrapers so i'll be i can provide an example let's say we want to use this building here which why not it's a good fit uh, i'll place down a building and then i'll go into either low or high density commercial you can use offices as well if need be and then i will actually pick buildings here that are gonna be the base and then i'm just going to merge them in so I'm just making an example, but I mean, I'm going to keep it. 
and we'll do like that. This creates like a bigger uh, complex and I think it makes the skyscrapers that we place um, mix in much better with the rest of the urban fabric. I mean, they just they don't stand out as much. But like I said, the main avenue here is definitely going to be the most developed part. So uh, let's just start chipping away at it and uh, placing down some high density buildings.
Alright, so we've got a massive chunk of downtown finished up and the density is very, very high. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the mixture of all the many different types of buildings we've used here. I've really tried to use a, a very wide selection just to make it a little more interesting looking. Not every building is good looking when it's vanilla, that's for sure. But I think it looks alright. We will we'll probably revamp some of this. As we move along especially if we can actually start earning money and have um, you know we and then afford uh, actual skyscrapers but uh, we'll see for the uh, this section of downtown here what we'll see is uh, something that i've already tried to achieve here which is that there is an overall lower density on these blocks um, so the density is uh, the highest um, for the buildings facing this main avenue and of course the buildings facing uh, the um, the inland rivers here because it has uh, you know it has additional value of living next to to this view if we take a look it's pretty nice but yeah I'm going to continue this transition to overall lower the density a bit here add a bit more surface parking as land values just drop ever so slightly generally there's not going to be a ton of surface parking here because it is still uh, I mean land is still quite valuable here in the city due to the I mean, obvious restraints of it being being an island, but we'll see the density drop and uh, parking lots added. Before that, though, I need to build out some services while I still have the money to do so. So we're going to need, a, you know, schools. We're going to need hospitals, fire stations, um, uh, police departments, all that good stuff. Let's start with a police department. I'm going to grab this high capacity one. It's no, I'm not. It's 95,000. Never mind. I'm um, 60,000. 60, oy, 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 oy. I am just gonna grab the small one, which is 12,000. Thank you very much. What do we have here? Historical police station. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cute looking. Maybe we could have like uh, an area here with some more historical buildings. Mm, yeah, let's wait with that and just get our regular police station placed. And that is so expensive. Uh, for fire station, it's probably, yeah, it's the same. 60,000. That's just, we can't afford that. So we're going to go with this scuffed $12,000 option. I'd like to provide some healthcare up front and the hospital is 65 which is ridiculous this nice one is 95 which is yeah whatever medical clinic is 10,000 10, and uh, that's uh, that's something we can work with very nice elder care hmm, no child health center nah never mind we'll need a crematorium and Whereas, when is there ever a good place to place this? I'm not really sure. I think I'm gonna place it here, but I might, I might end up. Co I think I'm gonna place it over here actually, and then I might cover it up with like a, you know, uh, like a building. I almost want to, but I think I'm gonna place a church here, and then we'll have the crematorium out here in the back, something like this. We'll just add a tiny bit of detail to this area before we move on. Because we won't have much else than just some park landscape here next to the next to the church. Something like this. And of course, just a few palms. We are in palm country. There we go. Uh, we'll need a bit of like surface parking lots I feel for the police station uh, actually I'm going to just dedicate this entire lot to the police station then we'll add a fence uh, let's see what we've got do, 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 do. Add this park fence is actually fine and then luckily I've got a mod which turns my all my vehicles into props um, so we'll be able to add like a parking meter and then add police cars as well as props. So that's uh, that's awesome. Add some, uh, just add some like parking stuff here. It's uh, it's a bit random, but uh, it'll do. Now let's see if I can actually grab this fence. I am so 
cloak. Come on. Yeah. Success. There you go. <laughs> and let's see if we can just search for police. We can. The super car is not what we're going to go with. I think first I'll see if I can actually just place a bit of parking for the employees. We've got a parking lot here. No, we don't. That was actually an asset. We'll grab this one instead. Just gonna add a bit of parking in here. And that's actually a bit of a massive parking lot for a police station. So we might just choose to expand this ever so slightly. And then this fence here will delete. And we're going to fence it in a little differently to make more room for the police cars, basically. Yank something like this. Cool. And we can like... We could, we could add like a planter here to kind of separate this part of the parking lot from the um, place where we have all our police vehicles. So let's just add some, some cars. We'll have some of these as well. Very nice. Can we do the most simple uh, line work in the history of the game? We can, but I don't know what the actual decal is named, but I have used it out here, right? So maybe I can just use the picker mod to select it. I could. So uh, yeah, I really love that mod. Makes it super easy for me to just grab whatever I need. And we'll just make it a solid line. And as before, it doesn't have to make much sense. It's, uh, it's just a bit of detailing, right? There we go. We've got our very own police station. Uh, the medical clinic likely needs a little more parking. So we'll do parking on both sides of the road here and sort of have them connect up right there. We'll add a bit of a tiny, tiny bit of detailing. Just have it completely occupy this lot. I think that's fine. It's not very high density though, so that is that is a little odd, but um, yeah, it's fine. Once again, a few trees added into the mix. We'll go with a bit of a bigger style this time around. Add in some palms. Very nice. Got our fire station over here, and it would be pretty cool if we do sort of the same that we did for the police station. So if we could just drop this back ever so slightly, maybe actually place it over here on the lot. And then we'll grab our fence once again to kind of highlight uh, what uh, the fire department actually occupies. But I, yeah, I don't think I, I, I actually don't want to grab like the entire lot. I think that's going to be a bit excessive. So we're just going to do this and then we'll grab a few a few engines to place. And, oh, these look very, very cool. Huh? But uh, yeah, we'll go uh, full on vanilla mode. Aren't these beautiful? <laughs> What's up with the scale here? Oh man, this game. <laughs> Sometimes. Five engines. Maybe that's a tad too much. I... Um, I'm really not an expert on this, but uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Line work once more, just, just because. And we've got a fire station. So we're getting a few of our services covered now. We need uh, schools though, and I expect we're actually gonna need two or maybe more because I'm using the realistic population mod, which means that a skyscraper like this has 98 households. This building has 139. And I don't know why this one only has 42. Anyways, my point is that the mod attempts to simulate more realistic population figures for tall buildings. Uh, but of course, it also means that for single family houses, so normal houses, I only get one household. But what I'm trying to say is several thousand people are probably going to move into downtown and they will need 
uh, schools for the kids. So I'll have to do something here where I kind of join two schools together like this. It's, uh, it's the oldest trick in the book, I feel. So um, no shame in doing that. And then a bit of parking as well. There you go. And maybe we could even have a playground attached to these lucky, lucky kids. And we've got these tiny playgrounds that came with uh, one of the recent updates. So it would be fun to add these. Are these changeable ones? They are different variations. That is very, very cool. So I'm just going to add three of those. It's pretty nice, actually. I like it. Uh, I kind of like that idea they've gotten there by allowing for several variations within what is practically the same as it. That is pretty cool. We'll just add like a dirt path throughout to kind of frame in the whole area. There you go. And some good old trees, right? Nice. School is uh, probably has good coverage. Almost 500 students now. With services in place, I also want to add City Hall. So that's a pretty simple plop job rock like this. And then I guess I guess we'll just try and make some sort of a somewhat fancy plaza out front. And I'm, I want to say nothing fancy as soon as I say that. So yeah, nothing fancy actually. Um, just to have something. And yeah, I'm going to use this uh, red brick uh, walkway throughout much of the city. So um, why not go with that theme? But since I didn't use snapping, the lines are completely wonky. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do with wonky lines for now. There we go. Are we adding like a statue? Do we have a statue? Yeah, we do. We've got we've got this dude here. Probably someone important. But uh, yeah, I don't know more than that. There you go. Very nice. And we'll do the symbols of detailing we can imagine, which is pretty damn simple. So not palms, <laughs> these bushes, very, very simple landscaping. But it does actually add a lot of character just, just doing this simple landscaping. There we go. We've got city hall as well. So this is kind of like the uh, like a public administration slash service district. And we've got some empty spots here now that we are going to fill in with um, apartments, commercials, uh, a commercial building, sorry, offices, some parking and so on.
there she is, downtown in all her glory and overall pretty happy with the result we've got going here. Uh, we should have ample service coverage for all the residents moving in. Um, but it's a good question on just how many residents will be moving in. I've also expanded uh, slightly beyond downtown down here. We've got a district called the Landing, which kind of includes um, this place here, which is where the initial settlers actually landed on the island way back. Uh, it's just got a little like uh, lower medium density development here. Just remove this tree. There you go. And then there's this open plaza here with some street food stuff. Overall, very really happy with this. I'm going to hit play and then we'll see what's going to happen with our population and our money. Here we go, folks. Oh, man, this is insane. And look at our oh, look at our income, all the tax revenue. And I haven't even bumped taxes up yet. I should probably adjust them to like 12%. across the board and and now we're just we're swimming in cash due to the influx of people that is really the power of the realistic population mod and the this super dense high-rise cluster we've got going we've got so many people just flocking to move in so i'm just gonna just gonna let the game run for a bit and um, let the population settle and i'll get back to you guys so I've just paused now as we've crossed the 5,000 population mark and I'm very happy to see the city already be so lively. Uh, lots of people taking a stroll here near the uh, like the rivers here and we're going to adhere to some of our demand needs and we can see that we've got high demand for industry or offices. I'm going to guess that it's industry given that we we do have a few offices, big offices in the city that actually don't they are not able to uh, really fill in all their highly educated positions, which makes sense since we don't have a college slash university uh, yet. Um, so I'm going to assume it's industry. And if we check a look at the um, stat panel here for the Spear or uh, industrial district, we'll see that there's there's like zero percent um, like of employees. Right. So. So every single position here is just about filled filled out, uh, which uh, makes me feel that we're going to need a bit more industry. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this area, fill in some of this near the landing uh, on both sides of the uh, water treatment plant here. So first up, let's start by just clearing out everything here with our forest brush and create like a road network out workout road network <laughs> should be working out but i'm sitting here in the evening playing city skylines we'll create a road network to host some additional warehouses i'm gonna primarily use warehouses because i really do enjoy the aesthetic of the warehouses that came with the recent uh, industrial content creator pack it's something that i feel has been sorely missing from the game so i was very very happy to see that addition and i'll just create a very simple road layout like this and we'll jump into our industry and i'm gonna leave a bit of space for some trees here and there i think that really adds something and i i want to say that it's actually a rule they have here in the island that you can only have so much industrial capacity uh, within a given area before it has to be broken up by a line or a line or a row of trees and some nature we'll start off with a recycling center always loved this asset let's grab the apron so that we can fill out uh, the area right next to it give them a little more space to work with so we'll just uh, fill in this we'll grab the uh, let's see is it the it's called the ore fence or industrial fence it is we'll fence this in and basically i'm hoping we've got some piles of dirt that we can place here we do creating a little recycling slash garbage vibe here and we'll just 
add in some uh, some garbage trucks just completely random uh, throughout and I'm just gonna use a few different styles because that's more fun there we go we've got a recycling center and this stretch of land we're gonna use for that uh, tree barrier that I talked about just a few moments ago this rule we've got here in the city so I'm just going to add in um, the barrier of trees in between the industrial lots here make it really nice and overgrown great let's get some uh, more industrial stuff placed down here So I've just finished up adding some extra industry and I've just renamed the spear Miles Point, which doesn't make much sense either, but I mean, I it has a bit of cling to it. Um, I'm gonna hit play and see if that helps satisfy a bit of our industrial demand um, because it's still quite high. We can see it dropping and it seems that I added around 300 uh, workplaces to our industrial zone, which is... Uh, Quite impressive actually but it seems that even with 300 extra positions i am nowhere near satisfying our demand for industry um so damn i don't really want to build much more industry at this point before we move on we've actually got some traffic issues to fix which i'm a bit surprised about um because the city is still relatively small and the population isn't exactly huge but we've got some areas that are very very highly trafficked and one of the fixes we can do is this entrance point here using the traffic um, manager president edition we should be able to just create much more flow here generally so if we take a look at this junction, for instance, we can allow cars to just have a continuous flow throughout by enabling these options. This one enables a lane crossing as well, of course, in the actual junction. So this one is the more important one. And we can already see that the flow has increased substantially. So that's very nice. We're going to go ahead and do the same over here. Uh, in case you want to leave so this is primarily like exported goods and whatnot that is uh, that's leaving uh, something i'm doing right now is just saving up a bit of cash because we've uh, reached kind of a milestone now because i'm thinking of paying back the two loans so we've got some um some grubby capitalists here uh taking in a good chunk of our profit actually global credit incorporated and silver sunset bank we had to borrow money uh some time ago to just get the city started and now we can pay back ah doesn't that feel good economic responsibility speaking of responsibility we are definitely due for a high school um, more so a university but we're gonna start with the high school that's uh, kind of the natural step after elementary school and we've got a few options there's the cookie cutter high school which is the most uh, cheap option and has a capacity of about 1000 which uh, is more than sufficient for our current needs uh, but then we've also got this institute of creative arts which is uh, 
for some reason many more many times more expensive while only having double the capacity but i'm also assuming that it's a bit of a cool asset so i'm actually thinking that i'm gonna go with this one because i am pretty confident that i have never ever placed down this asset so that's a milestone in and of itself so i think we're just gonna place this and have a look and i start to understand why i've never placed it <laughs> I'm actually i'm joking it it actually looks looks kind of cool it looks very modern and sleek which is to be expected uh from a building like this so let's uh yeah i mean let's add parking right what else is there to add than parking uh, we need these or power teens to be able to, you know, get her by the power of daddy's car. So um, let's enable them. There you go, we've got Isla Soleada Institute of Creative Arts, where I'm sure tuition is very cheap and fair. Students are rolling in as we speak. And I built this modern apartment complex right next to it to add a bit more housing to the city. Uh, overall, the amount of households here in the city has grown substantially. And one of the ways I've achieved that is that I've gone through most of the skyscrapers and changed the amount of households in many of them because uh, the figures that they had before didn't really seem realistic. Several of these house uh, skyscrapers sorry, had like one household for each floor. These for instance I think maybe one or two and I don't really think that's realistic at all. So I've went ahead and adjusted some figures. There's also been a few that I've lowered a bit, but overall the amount of households has increased a lot. And as we can see, we've got a bit more than 400 units that are currently empty. So the city is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Um, we've also got about 400 uh, job um, positions that are open in the downtown core. And if we check Miles Point, we can see that just about every position is filled out. Uh, all in all, with the additional stock of households that we've added, the city is screaming for more industry or offices uh, to, uh, you know, to expand the job market here in the city. So that's something we'll have to add. We'll have to just add more jobs. Uh, first, though, there's another issue entirely we have to tackle, because if we take a look at our traffic, this is the worst traffic I think I've ever seen in this game. So that's a bit of an accomplishment. Uh, now it's pretty hard to um, make traffic on this stretch of road here um, much better because, I mean, I just did the bump of households in the downtown core. And of course, that means that we have uh, a couple of thousand of people, you know, trying to move in at the same time. So that's going to be an issue that's going to clear up with time. But another issue entirely is, of course, that we've got uh, almost we've got more than 700 jobs here in Miles Point, but we've only got we've primarily just got this road here to connect the large population centers with this uh, job center. So we're gonna have to to fix that, and I think we can we can do a two-step fix. Uh, first up, I'm going to connect this stretch of road here 
So let's just do that quickly. That's uh, I think that's the best start probably to try and balance out the traffic a bit more. I'm adding a road here and I'll just quickly remove all the trees. And I think we might even go with like a multi-lane, like the small four-laner, just to increase the actual capacity of this road. The next step, I think, is to start adding some public transportation to the city. Because even though the actual footprint of the city is quite small, um, it's not super walkable. You're not going to walk from here and out here if you work out here on these warehouses in Miles Point. But if there's a bus service with tons of buses uh, covering Miles Point and much of downtown, then that will probably help a bit. So I'll be adding a bus depot uh, out here in Miles Point. I think that's a pretty good location to, to add it. We've already got a road here that we can expand and we'll just drag this in here and let's just see what options we've got available to us. Should probably just search for depot and click on the public transportation here. So we've got the classic bus depot, it's a little boring looking. And then we've got this biofuel bus depot, which is a little more exciting, but I think that also restricts the amount of uh, buses that we can, can use. And I don't even know how the biofuel buses actually look. But I guess we can just place one and then see if we've got some cool options to uh, to choose from. I think they look fine, but it's a little restricting to only have like a single version. So I'm just going to go with the regular depot and it's going to be a little little boring like that. We'll, uh, we'll add a taxi uh, depot at the same time and this location out here is also pretty good for that i feel and then let's just grab some uh, aprons get our industrial vibe going With our bus depot in place, it's uh, time to add some bus lines, of course. And I'd just like to cover a lot of ground here in um, in Miles Point. I think we'll start all the way over here and then we're just going to work our way through. And try to really prioritize having quite a few stops down here. So that you've got ample uh, ability to get to your workplace. Uh, now the tricky part is covering downtown because it's a very large area. Um, but I think the, the first thing I'm going to do with this line is basically just get it to cover uh, most of this main avenue. Uh, because I think that's that's going to be a pretty good start. Alternatively, we could have an additional stop. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Have an additional stop here. And then we can stop out here as well. And we could stop at the college because then we've got we've got connection from downtown to the college. But I mean, you are one a lazy boy if you don't just walk. But I mean, if you live like in the what that be eastern part of downtown down here, then maybe you jump on this bus. I don't know. It's uh, not a pretty route. Let's. Uh, I'll just. What just happened? Why would? Why would you go? Why not? Ah, that's a one way. Of course. Okay. So I, I'm gonna place the stop here, then have it be a bit uh, asymmetrical. And I'll do the same here. Then here we'll just. Merge up and throughout the rest of this line as well. There you go. So we've got a single line now. Let's see what kind of buses we have available to us. Bus line one. Uh, all right. 
That's uh, that's fine for now. Capacity, capacity. We've got a lot of cool models available uh, available to us with the recent additions. Ben Bendy Bus, super Bendy Bus. <laughs> I love that. I think we're just gonna go with a pretty straightforward um, 30 capacity bus as a start. This one looks pretty good. And the line being blue, that's fine with me. Let's see how many vehicles it's counting for. 10. Let's try with 10 and then we'll see how, how that works out for us. With buses now saving some car trips throughout uh, much of the city, or at least the city that we've got so far 78 percent of car trips 97 percent saved wow okay i'm gonna have to bump up the amount of vehicles ever so slightly as the network is building um volume traffic traffic uh, traffic passenger volume <laughs> slowly but surely and we got a lot of people waiting at these stops so i'm gonna increase to 10 vehicles i had to drop it down to seven because it just didn't they didn't really fill, but uh, things have certainly changed. Seemed the network just had to kind of have some time to settle in. Uh, with this fix, though, I think it's time that we finally start expanding our road network so we can actually spread out the city. We're going to need more suburban type development. So what I'll be focusing on is establishing a complete road layout for this entire area here surrounding Lake Erie. And some of the names are actually, um, I mean, they're okay. If it weren't for the city having like a Spanish name, of course. But for now, we're just going to stick with it before we change it. I don't have the imagination to start changing any of them. I think my main point here is that for the districts that are adjacent to downtown, so Beachwood Square and Frank the Franklin District, uh, I'm going to... Uh, use a combination of row houses with some very narrow uh, single family homes in an attempt to kind of lower the density like that and I'm str I'm gonna sprinkle in a few apartment blocks alongside the main like roads so for Franklin district it's obviously this avenue here that is going to have a bit of a higher density and then here in uh, Beachwood Square it's gonna be alongside these main roads here this sort of triangle so I think the first thing we can do is actually just start with Beachwood Square. And what I'm going to go in and do is I'll just be placing down some um, some commercial stuff alongside these main roads. And then I'm going to fill in the residential afterwards.
Now this is my attempt at creating like a mixed density area that represents an inner suburb that is very close to downtown where you have some medium and maybe even high density stuff that is kind of creeping in as the suburb or neighborhood is uh, slowly but surely densifying due to increased demand. Increased demand to live close to downtown where all the fun stuff happens. Um, and while it's really nice, it's also taking a lot of time. And this is about the point in time where I realized that if I don't get a move on, I'm not gonna be able to create an actual city here. We've got some of the most important time consuming stuff already placed but we are missing rest of the city so i'm going to start smashing out suburbs now like it's nobody's business and i'm gonna have to go a little lower on the detail and be a little less strict in what kind of assets i want to use uh, so yeah get your seat belts on because we're going at the um, we're going full speed now
So as you may remember uh, from something I said earlier in the episode, which I mean, given the size of this video could be like six hours ago, I actually did want to place down some of the skyscrapers from the skyscrapers content creator pack. But at the time, we just didn't have the dollarinos to do so. But uh, we've got the, the money now. So I'm thinking that we start placing down a few of these. Um, and I don't want them to stick out too much compared to like the, uh, let's call it the growable skyscrapers that we have in place, because that might look a, a little odd. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that I can carefully just uh, remove a few buildings here and there and then add, add in these uh, skyscrapers without it being too, I guess intrusive is maybe a good word for it. Uh, so, for instance, this one I think is an alright fit, but it's also probably as bulky as we're gonna go. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to use the Rico mod and Realistic Population mod to change them into functional assets. Because as it currently stands, they basically just, you know, they just drain money from you, unfortunately. And I think that's a, that's a pretty unfortunate feature from this content creator pack that they are more like tourist destinations. <laughs> That essentially just cost you an upkeep uh, every week uh, while in reality in the cities where they exist they of course provide either thousands of you know um, high paying jobs or thousands of uh, or at least many hundreds of uh, apartments uh, so it's my plan to make them a little more functional in that way I think this one integrates uh, rather nicely as well. I'm gonna change the color scheme of most of them to just like a, a white shade. Makes them stand out just a bit less. They got like a bit of a darker tint than the rest of the buildings I have. Would like to replace this one as well. It's not really a pretty thing, is it? So we've uh, settled for these four skyscrapers, but as I mentioned, they are not really all that functional right now. But if we go in here and select Rico settings, we can say add local and then we can actually specify the amount of households. Now, this one is 44 floors uh, big. And let's just say that we've got about 10 apartments each floor. Maybe that's even a little too much. So if we just adjust that a bit, we can say that we've got about 300 households in this building. And then we we'll say uh, save and apply changes. And as you guys can see, it changed format. So that now when we click on it, it's basically a, a high density residential building. And we could go in with realistic population and overwrite um, the, um, the home count. What we can see here is that the calculation is around seven homes per floor, uh, which uh, I think is pretty much what I wanted. We can do the same for the other buildings. I think this one is clearly a residential structure uh, as well. Uh, it's a little bulkier in some parts than this one, uh, and it's about as tall. Uh, so I think we'll just we'll just create sort of the same uh, amount of uh, of um, apartments to maybe make it a bit more unique. We can say uh, like 315, and then we'll say save and apply local changes. And if we click on it again, it's a high density uh, residential building. This one, however, I feel has a very corporate look. Um, so if we go into Rico, we can once again say add local. But this time around, we're going to change this to commercial. Uh, I'll see we could also change it to office, which is probably um, what makes the most sense. But we can also specify whether it's financial or IT cluster. So we can set it to financial uh, if that's what we want. I don't know what kind of difference it makes, but it probably plays into some kind of dynamic if you have districts that are um, themed for financial or IT. But basically we can come in here and then we can just start uh, adding jobs. This is a skyscraper and they have a ton of jobs, um, like thousands of jobs basically. So. Without going into many calculations, I'm just going to say this building has 1600 jobs. The suggestion for the for the Rico settings is down here. What I'd like to do is just change this ever so slightly. <laughs> I guess one reason is that I lack highly educated Sims. So 
filling in 300 spots is going to be very, very tough. Uh, so if we just move about 500 to educated instead so that we end up at 1600 then that's perfect say so save and apply and if we open it up we see that we've got 1600 workplaces and this is the split the one we specified uh, this building here also has a kind of a commercial look to it right ne next to the uh, nightclub Ooh, very nice we can uh, once again use Riku to uh, to correct it a bit. We'll go ahead and we'll say add local. And I think that for this one, we are going to just go commercial uh, high density. And it's uh, a smaller one than this one over here. So instead of 1600, we can specify uh, like, let's say 950 jobs. Once again, I'm just going to lower this amount ever so slightly and then we'll just add it from here and we'll say save and apply changes. And we'll have a look, see if everything worked out. Oh, I'm using move it. There you go. So not only does this remove the upkeep, um, but of course it uh, it's also going to provide, um, I mean, especially these residential ones, they are very obviously going to provide tax income. And I think that's a wrap. This whole challenge turned out to be a monstrous task for me. Uh, and I knew I wanted to fill out the entire island. And of course, that means that some of the areas are lower detail. But I think before we call it, uh, I'll give you guys a little tour of everything we'll build. There'll be some cinematics as well, so don't worry about that. Of course, we've got downtown. We've seen plenty of this. We've got our big industrial area also featuring bus hubs and some of our utilities. Uh, we've got the, the bus hub over here, which I'm pretty happy with. We've also got some sort of warehouse industry, some container stuff, loads of good stuff here. Um, as we transition to this neighborhood, we are still relatively close to the higher densities of downtown, but we are seeing a mixture. So we've got some medium density uh, developments here. Uh, we've got some um, some commercial developments here alongside some of the most uh, some of the main roads, some of the main arterials here. But generally, we're also seeing a shift to single-family homes and some uh, some row homes. Uh, the trend kind of continues here as we uh, push northwest up the coastline. Here, we've got uh, some main roads that are lined with a few higher-density developments especially concentrated, concentrated sorry, near intersections. So here we've got uh, a bit of a, a commercial center, uh, which is uh, a couple of miles outside of uh, downtown. You can get some nice pancakes and um, yeah, lots of good stuff. You can go grab some noodles or donuts if that's what you want instead. We're going to continue moving north here along the western coastline as we... Uh, move up north here we see that most of the blocks turn into completely detached housing single family uh, lots of pools and the lot size is generally a little bigger than the previous neighborhood so as you guys might be able to see people have a little more space here and their houses are a little bigger um, however the, the island is trying to upzone certain areas to uh, try and meet the ever increasing demand for living in this real paradise where the weather is nice all year round. And as a result of that demand and the upzoning, we see clusters such as this one, where previously there used to be lower density developments of some sort here. Uh, and it's now all been upzoned, bought up by a developer, and we've got a medium to high uh, density. Um, full block here basically and got some amenities as well I hope you're a fan of, of basketball there's nothing else here uh, but that's just an example of densifying an existing area as we cross this little bridge to this uh, island here in the northwestern corner of, of the map uh, we've got pretty much a solely single family detached housing development we've once again got like a small a commercial cluster in here which is served by buses that circulate the entire island we are a little further away from downtown we can just can we even yeah we can see downtown in the distance between this newer skyline here 
uh, and we can see a couple of hotels out here which we'll get to in uh, in just a bit uh, but basically this is a, a very very high demand uh, posh neighborhood and what i tried to achieve here is that for the roads that are you know right next to the beach and beautiful landscapes such as these uh, i'll try and pick the vanilla houses that look the most posh so we've got these villas and mansions and i i honestly feel they fit in real well i mean just look at this location man just imagine just chilling here by the pool uh like she is and you've got the city right in here you've got like your own little commercial cluster down here and you've got this view from your pool yeah that's uh fantastic so yeah low detail for this entire area i i just try to i try to avoid assets that look too much out of place but if we actually zoom in and start looking at these assets we'll see lots of different styles intermixed um but i guess i i, I think it works it looks okay and uh, we've absolutely abused trees throughout the entire map and that has certainly helped cover up much of this we've got a cul-de-sac down here where we got some fantastic mansions as, as well with the awesome locations and much of the island here has got these uh, nature uh, trails you can you can follow we cross another bridge to this small uh, island in the uh, northern central part of the uh, of the island and once again we've got some very very uh, expensive uh, luxurious mansions and i mean the reason for for these are obvious the location is absolutely awesome we we've also got a bit of a lower income uh, development here which uh, sticks out a bit but thinks it add a bit of character and then we've got some uh, recent, uh, not all that recent, these are actually old and ugly, but yeah, okay. We've got some uh, hotel developments here along this beach. So we've got like a, a small tourism cluster here. And if you uh, notice the type of commercial establishments, you'll also notice that they are tourism geared. Like there are pubs and cafes and restaurants and bars, all geared towards the tourism in, uh, in this area. And I just stitched together to hotels here to create like a unique building we move across this uh, wonky wonky bridge uh, and over here we are in the north eastern corner of the island now i wanted to like place an old historic uh, beachside hotel uh, so this is the model i went with a bit of parking uh, a modern cafe next to it and then just lots of nature surrounding it Got a chance to use this uh, park as well, which uh, was part of a recent update or DLC, I think. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool. You've got Sims walking across the, the bridge here. A uh, bit unfortunate that the water doesn't really animate. Um, yeah, that would have been a nice touch. But uh, we are just about as far away from downtown as, uh, as you can get at this location. Uh, but as you guys can see, we've still got uh, ample uh, bus coverage here, so you can easily grab a bus and go downtown if that's what you want although i don't expect these people to actually take the bus i think these people drive also got an old in here from the hotel's dlc i thought that would fit in rather nicely we move a bit south and we've got this uh, stadium uh, yeah this was like a quick decision and i'm not sure we've got enough parking but I feel like adding a stadium would be a pretty essential feature for a city of this size. I, I say that, but there's lots of other stuff missing, but yeah. You know, you can't have any everything. Um, for this development, I also imagined a, a, a stretch of land that was protected uh, beforehand, so nothing could be built here, but then recently due to demand and the need for better service uh, coverage, uh, the, the city council opened up for development. So we've got a modern high school, we've got a modern childcare center, we've got a modern community school, and then we've got uh, this section of modern uh, medium density uh, condos, basically adding some much needed uh, housing to the housing stock. We move on to the last of the smaller islands. And uh, this stretch of land is uh, once again uh, a piece of land that uh, has either recently been allowed for development uh, and was just a nature trial before or has been upzoned and the effect is very i mean very imminent right we can just see that 
developers had, had made sure to use the space pretty well here and built uh, to the skies by building uh, high rises. And there are a few parking lots and, and maybe some, some older establishments, but generally uh, it's pretty obvious that there's uh, quite a bit of demand because as soon as uh, an area, a stretch of land like this is opened up, developers flock in to buy it up and start developing some high density stuff. Moving on top of the uh, the Soul Mountain here, I've placed down this uh, mountain cabin, which is also from the Hotels DLC. I thought that would be a pretty cool location. Uh, you got lots of like uh, like these, these uh, nature trails that you can you can use uh, to walk around the mountain, and you've actually you're pretty tall here, so you got some very very stunning views of uh, the downtown core and. Uh, some of the other high-rise developments throughout the entire island, you can even see the stadium. So um, I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, that concludes this uh, fun little challenge. If you've stuck with me for this long, then thank you very much. I appreciate it and I hope and assume you enjoyed it. Uh, we sit at just shy of 22,000 population and I'm pretty sure the traffic flow is absolutely horrendous. Uh, 63, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, we've definitely got some traffic is issues throughout the, the island, but generally things flow quite all right and my bus lines are pretty pretty well uh, occupied. If you want to see even more content from me, uh, then on my channel you'll find many different series. Currently I am working on a extremely detailed, highly custom series called Conifera, which you can see a little snippet of here. You can check that out if you want, link in the description. But I'm also working on a build that is very similar to the one I built here. This is my Crystal Reef County series where I'm trying to create a highly detailed realistic scale cities based on somewhere in Florida using only vanilla assets. There's a little snippet here and there's of course a link in the playlist down below. I guess the last question I have for you guys is since I had to kind of go a little faster over many of these areas out here and apply less detail we we've got quite a few things that we could actually add to this city we could add a university uh more stadiums uh dedicated parks a zoo a theme park there's a ton of things that you could actually add to make this island even more complete so my big question is would you guys want to see that is would you request like an additional episode where we upgrade the whole thing I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments what you guys feel. With all that said, I'm, I'm done rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.